On this episode of RVA Real Estate Talk, we will be talking to a registered nurse as well as a local lender to find out how COVID has really affected the market, how things have changed. We'll be talking restaurant reviews like we always do, but it may be a little bit different this go round. So get ready, RVA Real Estate Talk. You're listening to RVA Real Estate Talk with Jared Davis and Galen Parker. Your source for an honest, insightful look into Central Virginia's real estate market. Combined, Jared and Galen have over 20 years sales experience, as well as hundreds of testimonials from clients past and present who rely on them for advice and assistance when buying and selling homes in today's incredibly hot and competitive real estate market. And now, your hosts, Jared Davis and Galen Parker. What's happening? This is Galen and Jared with RVA Real Estate Talk. This is a new setup, isn't it, Galen? Richmond. I, I like it. I like anything that I can do in which I do not have to leave my house. Uh, I'm, we're going to play okay. a game called, is he wearing pants? We never know. Maybe, <laughs> maybe, maybe not. Don't, and, don't, and I know some of you guys are listening to this right now and you've got your little judgmental brains, but you know that when you are doing your Zooms, you're not wearing pants. You're not wearing shoes or socks. And that's what I'm doing. So I'm business <laughs> up top and super party down below how about you jared i am wearing pants but it's only because i just came in from pants snob. in the rain so they're soaking wet pants they will come off as soon as this is over uh, what are you talking about rain look at this background it's not raining it's beautiful outside <laughs> that's right your, your your green screen's looking very fine today hey, I, you can talk. Yeah. king of the city right here I'm this is right. richmond definitely rainy outside right this second. <laughs> but, uh, anyway. that's nice very nice so it. what is going on right now so so since the last podcast uh we have heard a lot it's been controversial apparently some of my opinions on subway tuna fish gas station tuna fish were <laughs> controversial i've received a lot of feedback and we thank you everyone who has barraged me with attacks about my personal character and preferences i'm sorry to offend you but i still Old to this day, Subway, if you're listening, I love you, and I will always love you. You will always be my boo. But uh, other than that, apparently there's there's the big elephant in the room. Uh, her name is Rona. She is pretty much destroying everything that we know and love. Jared, how are you? How are you faring? You know, we so we made a brokerage move actually right before this, and so we're at EXP now, EXP Realty. And so far, things have been selling very good. I think it took a, a solid month to get past all the nightmares of literally every single process. I know Mark is going to jump into that as a lender. I know, oh goodness, I know, Sean, your business has changed drastically over the last couple of months. So for us, it's been processes. You know, the lending process has changed. The guidelines have changed in some instances. Um, getting title work has become an issue because courthouse closures, permits got put on hold for a while. Uh, subdivision splits, pretty much everything. Appraisals. Uh, appraisals, everything got halted. Uh, and then after that process has changed. But overall, the market's been crazy. I mean, Galen, we put, what, 14 houses under contract in the last few weeks or something like that? There, I, I keep getting people asking me things like, should I, uh, is this a good time to put my house in the market? And I'm like, yes, please put your house in the market. Because there are just so many more buyers. Last week, I put an offer on a house that was, six thousand dollars over ask and they were like sorry just not good enough and then we i was like well how much and we kept them bidding up and then at the point we got outbid and it was just like man there are just so many people looking uh to buy and sell so if you are in the market to sell your home right now this is this is your this is your moment there are uh, you know obviously some changes i wouldn't say difficulties but some changes that you have to work through but it's still a really good spring market Inventory is so low right this second. I mean, I don't know what it's going like in Washington. We actually have a, a client that's that's moving in from Washington. If we didn't announce this already, Sean is actually from Washington State, or that's where she is right this second. But at least in Rich, Wa Puyallup. We say what? Well, it's Puyallup. It's in Graham, <laughs> so we're just south of Puyallup, and it's Wa kind of the Wa same here. But what's that? I'm, I'm still trying to figure out how to pronounce it. <laughs> yeah. Puyallup. How is your market there? It's not terrible. We have a huge military base here, so people are still PCSing, and it's a still very transient area. So we still have houses up for sale in this neighborhood. Okay. So wow. my client that I'm dealing with right now from there is on base there, and she's moving here. So that's what we're trying to deal with right this second. But what we've seen is anything in the city, Mark, you can probably attest to this, Stratford Hills, Forest Hill Park area, 
I mean, really, even into Churchill Monument fan. Westover. Twenty to thirty thousand dollars over on every offer I've put in in the last, I don't know, four or five weeks. I lost almost every one that's in those areas. So, uh, yeah, if you're looking to sell, it is definitely a solid time to sell for sure. Um, who do we have with us today, though? We did a short intro, but uh, Mark, introduce yourself. Sean, introduce yourself. Again, we're going to go into the deep dive where we talk about all of the changes that Corona has brought, but let's give the listeners who we're talking to so they can get an idea. Ladies first. Okay, so I'm Sean Irish. I graduated from Monaghan High School. Go Chiefs. All right. Um, my name is Mark. Let me give me a heads up if, <laughs> if you have any issues with my uh, feed or anything. But um, <laughs> my name is Mark Horton. Wait, who's laughing? You're lagging. You're lagging behind. I think you gotta hold on. Let Sean finish, then come in. Give it a second, Sean. Okay. Continue. Monaghan High School Chiefs. Go Chiefs. Uh, got out. Went into the Marine Corps. I uh, got married, had a handful of kids, became a registered nurse, came out here to Washington and uh, came from surgery. I'm at an endoscopy center now and just love in Washington. Very good. When you say handful of kids, what is that? Like, like that five? 18 to 45, depending on the day. There's three who live here. And then I gotcha. always have extras. I've kind of adopted <laughs> out of the neighborhood. Yeah. Nice. Okay. Gotcha. I was, I, was, I knew a lot of people were going to wonder about that. But anything after like two is a handful, right? Like you can only yeah. do like one in. Anything uh, after two, I, you just throw another person <laughs> yeah, in the back exactly. of your arm. <laughs> is this how you hold children? I'm not. <laughs> yeah. I don't know. Is this how you hold babies? Yeah, Sean, a football Sean's hold. a different world than we are. I don't, <laughs> I don't think any of us can relate to that. Mark? Who are you? You've been on before, but give us a give us a preview. Cause Welcome so back. Yeah, now you can talk, Mark. Is that my cue? Now it's your cue. Are you lagging that behind? Sorry, Mark. Okay. Maybe lagging Thanks, guys. Sorry, I I am I'm lagging a little bit, um, but uh, hopefully this will work out. My name is Mark Horton. I'm with Southern Trust Mortgage. Um, been in the mortgage business for about 15 years. Uh, love the company, love the city, um, moved to Richmond from California, a little bit different market out here, but um, really enjoy the local aspect of it. Um, my company's local as well, not too big, not too small, which I think is a nice good fit for me in mortgage. Um, does give you the sort of local connection where, you know, you're working with people that are familiar with the area, familiar with the agents in town. Um, which makes it a lot more fun uh, when you can work with people you like and you know. Um, definitely seen a lot of changes and it's definitely tested uh, my skill set. I don't know about you guys, but you really got to know your stuff to get through these market conditions. You got to be on top of it and you got to be out in front of it. Um, I feel like the company's done a great job doing that. And, uh, you know, we're in a place right now where we're still very functional had to make some modifications, of course, given the current circumstances, but it's all steam ahead or full steam ahead rather, and um, still doing a lot of great deals, seeing a lot of great interest rates, a few modifications to the guidelines out there, um, but it's minor. I mean, I feel like we can still find good programs for people, um, good, well-qualified people, and uh, deliver some, some great terms. So no reason to hold back, I, I think. If, you, if you're in a position to take advantage of the market, um, definitely do so. I mean, this is this is a great time to buy a house. Awesome. So our deep dive is going to jump into that heavily on kind of how coronavirus has changed lending, uh, what people need to think about if they're buying a house. On again the the nurse side, it's going to be really good to get uh, some feedback from somebody that's in the medical profession, so we can see what's going on, and then we'll give you our insight into what's going on in the the real estate side, the brokerage side. Um, all I can say is 90 days into where we're at, things have been amazing. If you're an agent that's listening to this, before we get into our restaurant reviews, I just want to throw this out there. This has been a time where I've had a lot of agents contact me and ask about kind of why we had moved over to eXp and just what they're doing right this second. Because the market is changing or shifting or there's a fear of shift, uh, there's a lot of people out there that are paying maybe high brokerage fees or they're paying high monthlies, desk fees, and maybe before they weren't thinking about making a change, but now they are. Uh, I can tell you without a certainty of a doubt that this last 90 days that we've moved has been 
the best decision we have made for our business um, to be able to see not only what we can do from a brokerage standpoint, but also the incentives that they've given us as far as our stock options, uh, the residuals, uh, the team building, the coaching, everything else has been phenomenal. And I just found out the other day that all of the residuals that we get paid are actually willable to our family. So if you're working on residuals and you're building that up, um, you know, there's some people in our network that are making $350,000 a month off of residuals right this second. Uh, if they died, if something happened to them, it's completely willable. So if you're an agent, you listen to our podcast. I know there's a handful of agents that are out there that are. Um, feel free to reach out to me and Galen. We'd love to sit down and have either a virtual coffee with you or a socially distanced coffee with you and talk to you about why we moved and why it's been so incredible. But on that note, we're going to jump into our restaurant reviews. Galen, talk to me. Uh, is, so, you know, it's a segment. It, yeah, you know, this is my me. favorite segment. This is where I like to shine. Uh, <laughs> normally, if you've been able to actually go to a restaurant, uh, I haven't been to a restaurant in quite some time. And for those of you who know Jared and I, we were kind of trending around like four or five restaurants a week. And uh, I think we've all lost weight because we're just eating at home. So we, I wanted to ask everyone, you know, Sean, yours is going to be more unique because a lot of us will have to like Google it. And when we all fly out to Puyallup, uh, Washington, and we go to visit you, we'll all say, can you take us to the restaurant? What is your number one takeout restaurant in the Washington area? What, do you, what are you going for right now? Or are you going anywhere? With your no, definitely kids. Trapper Sushi, right off the bat. So we go to Trappers all the time. We go to Ram. Shout out to Trappers. Time. Trappers is an awesome sushi place here, and they are probably doing as much business as normal. Every time I go in there, their entire bar is full of takeout bags for everyone. So that's awesome. They have awesome sushi here. Spell that for us: T R A P P E. T R A P P E R S. Trapper Sushi. We'll send them a little shout out a little bit later once we put out Trapper Sushi. Jared, you love sushi. Oh my gosh. I, I do. And Mark Horton knows one of my favorite places is Red Salt. Probably because of him, because we've gone there so many times for steak dinners and sushi dinners. And I miss Red Salt so much. I mean, I know they're doing takeout still, but it's just not that close to my house. And man, when everything opens back up, I think that's one of the first place. Like yeah. me, Mark, Galen, we have to go get a New York strip and we have to get some of that, all that bluefin tuna that they do with the, with the ponzu sauce mm. on top. Oh my God. Mm. Yeah. I am a sushi nut. That's actually was one of my guilty pleasures for delivery. I did sushi the other day and it was so good. It's not the same in my kitchen, but it was still amazing. Nonetheless. Where'd you go? Uh, I went to the one that actually our Moxie movers buddy referred us to Katana with the uh, okay. Rice. The purple rice sushi. And then Another I, Monacan high school grad. Yeah. yeah. Brandon Roundtree, Moxie Movers. I was very pleased with it. It was good. Yeah. Don't let what me about you, Horton? Yeah. Horton, what's your, um, your take out of choice right now? So I did last week, um, I did Fighting Fish. You guys mm. heard of that one? Yeah. 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 So they moved locations. They were downtown. They opened a brand new location over by uh, Fat Dragon on the boulevard. Okay. And they did I miss you, Fat Dragon. Takeout. Yeah, Fat Dragon's good too. One of my staples, actually. I'm kind of in that area. And the Fighting Fish Sushi, I wish I could share my picture of it because I had to take a beautiful picture. I was so excited to eat sushi. And it was there in 20 minutes. Great delivery service there. I mean, they're still cranking it out. So that's a good option. Okay. What's your favorite takeout right this second? It seems like we got stuck on sushi. What's your um, number one right takeout now? before and after COVID has always been Stella's Stella's market. Um, they've got a location in uh, Scott's edition and another one just in the fan there. And they've always had great meals. I mean, really a lot of their dishes you could eat to two people could share. I mean, the portions are huge, everything from pork ribs to salmon and then crusted, you know, um, like mustard crusted salmon. They've got um, a ton of pasta dishes, uh, fresh vegetables in there. You just go in, pick it up. They've got the plexiglass shield up so that, you know, they, they kind of only let one or two people in at a time and they kind of adapted quickly. Um, you can run in and grab something great. You can grab a bottle of wine. You can stock up on, they've got a few little market things there. If you need a couple 
you know, bags of chips or water, or, you know, something like that. So they do have some, some groceries there you can get. So pop in there, um, check the hours before you go. I've noticed that they vary their hours. Um, sometimes I've gone by there and I wonder why they're not open. Um, but, you know, <laughs> Where like, is everyone? <laughs> yeah. But uh, yeah, that's been a go-to for me. Now, I it, love that. What were you saying, Jared? I was going to say, is it the same menu that's at the Stella's restaurant or is the market a totally different menu? not the same i mean there's definitely some you know they do like a baked brie at the restaurant you're not going to get at the market for example but um they i mean they do have their own menu it's just um same kitchen obviously it's just a little more practical for takeout stuff that does work well when you take it home and heat it up so All right, I, nice. I mean it's limited but there's a good range still a lot, a lot of choices very cool I like it. Before we switch over to talk to Sean a little bit, can I just say I love the plexiglass windows that I'm seeing at everywhere I go. <laughs> I kind of wish they had that all the time. <laughs> like everywhere I go, like you're grocery gross. stores. Oh, yeah, you're can I say something? <laughs> yeah. Can I say something about that real quick? Fire away. I went to the ABC store. Yes, I did. And uh, the plexiglass was so clear and there was no like delineating border around it, I ran into it. <laughs> I was like, hey, yeah, I went to go like, I was, it was so- I'm here for my alcohol, so please. <laughs> Boom. I, like, I was like a, a little bit shocked to kind of run into that thing, but you gotta watch out. It's a crystal clear plexiglass. Nice job keeping that thing clean. I messed it up a little bit, unfortunately. They've got, now there's like a really good facial imprint somewhere in Richmond. Yeah. Like, so they're like, what is this? Yeah. It's like, this guy, he came in drunk and smashed his face to it. <laughs> no, I forgot about ABC stores the last time I was there. And I asked this lady at the grocery store where the vodka aisle was. And she's like, um, at the what? ABC store. No. You're like, oh, right. You I'm guys are still, yep. yeah. you're still 50 years behind everyone else. Yes. <laughs> That's awful. You know, I, I was saying, I was... I think I was at the ABC store last week. Jared, you and I were talking about this. Was it like Sunday or Monday that I went? Yeah. And bought like a million things, got some mezcal and a bunch of other things. But it is really funny that like I went into there, there's mm. like 50 people in the ABC store. I'm like, is this social distancing? I don't know. So I just went up to the counter and I was like, hey, I, here's my tip for anyone who struggles in stores like I do. This is a method that I've perfected over the last 36 years. It's called confusion purchasing. Um, I go up to someone who works there and I'm like, uh, where is the alcohol? And they take such pity on you that they will completely do all of your shopping for you. And it works for me at every restaurant, every store I've ever been into. So I just walk in there. I'm like, I, I'm sorry. I don't understand how any of this works. I have money. And they're like, oh, what's your list? I'm like, here's this list of a hundred items. They're like, you know what? Stay right here. I'll go get it all for you. I'm like, yeah, you will. So that's what I did at the ABC store. I just like went up there and the guy like looked at my list and he went and picked out all the stuff for me and then he brought it in and then he bagged it up and put it in. and I didn't have to touch anything. And then I brought my stuff home and then I immediately started like washing all of my groceries because that's the thing we do now. Um, you wash your groceries, yep. and you eat them, which again, I started thinking to myself, I'm like, why didn't I do this before? But uh, maybe I will. <laughs> Here, do you did you ever get sick it? before? It a different world. What did you say? Did you ever get sick before? Uh, yes, I got the flu this year and I got some sort of random virus as well, which, you know, now in hindsight, I was like, what's this that can't be it. But anyway, so I, I do get sick um, now that I don't get the flu shot, which I don't know. I, I used to get the flu shot and I never got sick and then I didn't get the flu shot and then I got sick. I don't know if that's correlation, but that's just what happened in my personal experience. So next year I'll probably get the flu shot and hopefully I won't get sick. You know, Target will pay you $5 to get the flu shot. My kids actually asked this year to go and get the flu shot. One of them even asked to get more than one. <laughs> really? He's a hustler. How does that work? <laughs> and I like their hustle. Yeah, yeah. Lila is a hustler. She was like, I'll go get three more because I have this toy down. <laughs> <laughs> Please inject me with needles and mystery drugs for money. That is they, you know, they're mar I don't know what they did, but it was genius. They said, okay, fill these forms out. Go wait for about 15 minutes. Well, in that 15 minutes, I'm sitting here going, you know what? I need new wine glasses. I need some wine to put in these glasses. I need a few more things for my house. So it worked. Yeah. Very nice. I like that. Hey, wait, Galen. <laughs> what's, you didn't tell me your takeout. What's your, what's your takeout right now? Hey, Jared, thanks for asking about my takeout. 
uh, I've been going to Anna's Pizzeria a lot. Um, they've got the amazing like meatball pizza. They've got great service. It's quick. Um, I've been I've been keeping it really simple. I'm south of the river, so south, so that I'm like I'm not really trying to do too much. Um, Cat is like almost against bringing any foreign objects into the house. So it was like a legal contract I had to write up to even get takeout to come inside of the house. She was not having it. Um, everything smells like bleach in my house even more than usual. So that's super helpful. She's keeping us really on schedule, really clean. Um, and as Jared, you know, she cooks a lot. So every night's kind of like a restaurant uh, for me. She's got like cookbooks and she works. What are you saying? Her cooking is incredible. Like if I could have your carnitas right now that would be fantastic yes and if you want to make me some more uh chicken fettuccine alfredo that would also be welcome and porcini that. mushroom sauce that she's uh, got you don't need the porcini mushroom for my steaks yeah <laughs> it's solid on steaks so i'm gonna need that i was gonna we we're gonna do favorite food at home but i feel like we're gonna go on for like 30 minutes if we talk about our food at home so why don't we end the food review on this what's your favorite go-to cocktail all right second for the house sean what do you got pendulum wine yeah it's Ooh. a thing it's very available here you can buy it by you know the six pack it's fantastic six pack of wine are you is that what you're doing now what time is it in uh winnipeg washington or where it's, uh, it's 10 30 in the morning <laughs> <laughs> love it <laughs> no when in rome yeah <laughs> i like it schedule right this is your night is that what's happening yes okay also i have a million kids upstairs and i'm homeschooling all of them while working at the same time oh man Ooh. drink your wine sis that's right it does not matter what time it is there <laughs> mark this one also just take a second for all the parents that are listening to this hats off to you guys um <clears throat> if i had <clears throat> i don't have kids. i don't know what that's like <laughs> I mean, good grief. I don't have any Man, kids. that's a lot. And I, I can't even around. imagine myself, like, teaching that's someone. Boys. Look, Am look, I, I mean, the only parent on here? What was that? You are the only parent. Yes. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. Represent for the parents. We oh, have sympathy God. for you, but we have no empathy. <laughs> Thank you. I need, I need, like, sympathy drinkers right now because I there's 45 kids upstairs. I'm homeschooling all of them. I have one high schooler and two kids in elementary school. I mean, all of them are in advanced programs and I'm just way over my head. <laughs> you wish your kids were dumber, right? You're like, yeah, I don't need wow. all this. Just, just, yeah. just get a slide pass. You can just slide on through. But, like Georgia right now, they, the kids are not even having to uh, go through driver's ed anymore. They're just washing it all over. So maybe all states will start doing that with like all topics and education programs. Man, that's oh. crazy. Mark, All right, so sh Mark, what's your drink? Go-to cocktail. I like what you said earlier, Galen. I like where your head's at with the mezcal. Nice. Me, take a little mezcal, mix it with some fresh grapefruit, maybe a little bit of agave. It's yeah. kind of like a Paloma, yeah. but the combination of the, the mezcal smoky with the tart grapefruit, the winner. Um, the other thing I like on the go-to note, um, Taza Kitchen is doing takeout cocktails, Taza Kitchen Margarita. Ah, okay. They give okay. you the salt, they give you the mix, they give you the limes, you just mix it up together at home. Salt, when you're home, and you have to not buy your two. car. They make you buy two. You have to buy two. Okay. So Taza Kitchen, and uh, I like the Mezcal. Those are my favorites. Jer Bear, what do you got? Well, first off, Galen, how do you feel about my margarita? That's not even a margarita. No, Jared, it, here's yeah. what Jared does for, for you guys are wondering this setup that Jared's doing. Jared serves me drinks and he calls them margaritas and it's pretty much just kerosene where he's thrown like little dashes of lime in them. And it's like, I live down the street from Jared and I like sometimes I'm like, I need to get someone to come pick me up. I can't drive the quarter of a mile for this one drink. That's clear. Also, Jared's margarita was like perfectly clear. He's like, what are you talking about? There's tons of stuff in there. I'm like, hey, this is raw grain alcohol that you smuggled from Russia. Ounce, ounce and a half of tequila, ounce and a half of triple sec, half a lime, 
That's a true margarita. You get like a solid ounce out of a half a lime. So. He does not put any lime. He holds the lime in his hand and <laughs> says the word lime. And then and he's like, yeah, there's the lime. And he doesn't put it in, in there. We were like, we were, we were playing video games one night. And I took a slug of it. I'm like, and I was like. <laughs> I was like, do, 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 do. All right, Jared, what's your drink? Oh, man. So margaritas were my drink for a while at home until really we hit the this whole pandemic and then i did a solid i don't know two weeks of margaritas and i just needed to change it up so at first i shifted and i went the paloma route like mark i got my grapefruit juice and i've been doing the same thing um but i got a cocktail book that a wonderful person named galen gave me for my uh wedding and i have been running through that cocktail book almost every night and thinking like i am either an alcoholic or a bartender literally i did not remember that i got you that i bought you like a couple of different things and like until you just said that just now i was like what i'm like oh yeah life bought it for me but (laughs) i like i bought you something else we bought you a bunch of stuff yeah but so i've i've went dark and stormy some planners punches old fashioned my nickname in college uh we did uh, a bunch of stuff that i don't even know some rob roy's I mean, it's it's pretty much a full fledged bar at my house every night now because Mark and cool. we used to go out and do cocktails after work a, a fair bit, and now I can't do that, so I have to learn how to make them at home. Mm-hmm. Uh, For a I'm while, there was good once a week, a good easy me and you once a week. So yeah, so now like you know we used to drink rye Manhattan. Look out. how much money is saved though on that. I know that, you yeah. saved so much money. That is one thing I got to say. Silver lining to this situation. I mean, I go to the grocery store every two hours. I'm not sure I've saved anything. <laughs> 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 like I go into the ABC <laughs> store. They're like, "Hey, Galen, what's happening?" <laughs> I'm like, "What's going on, Steve?" Yeah, uh, he has gotten a lot of my money. But you're right. I mean, I had no budget for restaurants. So when you have kids, I'm sure it's totally different. You're like, "No, we are not eating out with this 19 hellions every week." With it, when it's me and like my wife, and most of the time it's just me because I'm like out on a work appointment. I grab some food. I, I I just didn't even care. I think like the week before quarantine, I ate at Red Salt, Shag Bark, Ruth Chris, and something else. Like within the week, I think I was like, man, I need to take a hard look at my restaurant spending because I think we spent like fifteen hundred bucks just eating out that week. <laughs> so I was one of those things. Was like we should probably analyze this, and this has made me analyze. Yep. This. And now, when we went to Ruth's Chris together. Nice. I know it was fantastic. Yeah, of course, it was great. Oh, I miss restaurants though. I miss so my, me the food. My cocktail is uh, one that was recommended to me recently. Uh, shout out to Evan. Uh, I know wow. you are working from home, but you'll probably hear this later. Uh, I don't even know how to pronounce it. I've got Sorzando. <laughs> Jared, do you remember that one? <laughs> you, how did you pronounce it? I, I mean, whatever you're saying, I don't even know what it is. So it's S F O R Z A N D O, Sordando. So it's got rye whiskey, mezcal, uh, Benedictine, dry vermouth, and mole bitters. Ooh. And then you've got a little twist of orange. I can send that to you if anybody's interested. They've got like how, you know, it's like an ounce, three fourths an ounce, half an ounce, half an ounce, two dashes. But it is very good. Um, and I've had that the past couple of um, hours. I mean, days um and i've really enjoyed it so that is mine Sorzando. i know i'm gonna get an email from someone as always like this is how you pronounce it you imbecile it'll probably probably gonna be like you idiot i know so whoever you are as you are writing your email just remember i'm a human being i got feelings too you know be be gentle with me maybe it's not Sorzando. I don't know. We're gonna get a we're gonna get a letter from the Puyallup uh, Chamber of Commerce as well <laughs> for our pronunciations. I used to do a lot of business in Puyallup, like virtually. Like we'd send shipments there, and I I never got it right, so I'm used to failing on that one. You're really close. You're really close. Close Puyallup. We it's got, it's we got P Y L L A U P. I remember there's two L's. There's yes. a Y in there. I yes. used to write it a lot. All right. So that is our. We've just covered restaurants. We've just covered where we're eating, what we're making at home. Uh, we we kind of transition that for time's sake into drinking at home because that's what that's really awesome. makes a lot of us happy. Hey, next next episode we'll talk about meals. We'll break down some meals for everybody. Good idea. But Jared, is right. it now time? Time for the deep dive. All right, Gavin. 
I love that we've got the, that we're using the hand signals because you know there's people that are going to be able to see it and they're going to be like, what? yeah, they're going to watch it on YouTube and be like, what is he doing? And they're like, why does why does he keep doing this? <laughs> What's happening? It's because time breaks, and every time we don't have time break, our producer Mike Resendez of Studio Seventy Seven has a total freak out. He does. Uh, he not so to save his life, Mike, so. in this editing. This is your fault. <laughs> but it's a Zoom podcast, but we know the people keep asking for podcasts, so we're going to give it to them on Zoom. Here we are. We're back. So now that we're into the deep dive, we're going to switch into um, – we're going to go into a little bit of Sean. Sean Irish, Sean Vincent Irish, is in Puyallup, Washington. She's a registered nurse. And for a, like a lot of people, our lives are completely changed. They're so much different than they were pre-COVID and post-COVID. I'm sure – we're probably, as a generation, we're probably going to come up with a clever name for this, like the COVID era, uh, Rona, uh, post Kobe's. I'm, I'm going to stick with post Kobe's when this is all done. Uh, life post and pre Kobe's. But Sean, tell us, what was your work day like pre Kobe? So pre Kobe, we had about 18 patients per doctor per day. We had 30 minute turnarounds. They were very, very fast. Um, and now we're looking at, we're going to be scheduling patients about one every 45 minutes versus every half an hour. Um, a lot more sanitation. We completely shut down since March 13th, I want to say. Um, I was actually working March 12th, and I believe that was the day that Jay Inslee, our governor, came out and he made this big announcement saying, you know, hey, everything is going to be different. We're going to start tightening things up. And I was working during that time, so I didn't hear the announcement. I didn't even know he was coming out to announce anything. But you just felt this huge shift in energy. So all of our patients would come in with a certain amount of stress as it was just because they were coming in for procedure. But right after that, it was like stress was just pouring out of their ears. And I asked my manager, I was like, what's going on? Like there was just this huge shift and everybody is, is so stressed now. And she said, well, you know, Jay Inslee just made this huge announcement and things are going to start to tighten up here. So we're, we were all kind of anxious. And then the next day, that's when they said, okay, we're going to shut things down for a month. And at first we're going, okay, 30 days of this, this is terrible, but we can handle this. Um, and then it was, okay, well, the CDC, they have a really, it's a gray definition of what's urgent, what's emergent, all that stuff, who can stay open, who needs to close. So then they said, okay, we're going to stay open for our most critical cases. So we thought, okay, well, at least we know that our really critical patients are going to be seen. So my manager asked if I could go do chart reviews, stay in there and figure out, like, just really comb through all the charts, call the patients, speak with the doctors and find out who absolutely has to be in. And so I did that. So we initially scheduled them because they needed to be seen. And then we canceled them because the CDC said they're not urgent. And then we called them back to say, you know what? Okay, we have a gray area, you can come in. So we're gonna schedule you. And then the following week, so I was working three or four days that week and my manager said, can you come in? Can you come in? Can you come in? And so I did because I felt like that was my part combing through these charts. And uh, so I came in Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, and then Thursday, that's when we started to do those really critical procedures again. And we got through about two or three. And then that's when they said, close and lock the door. We're not letting in any more patients. So then we had to call and cancel all those procedures. So it was really rough for the patients. And at that point, I kind of went out into my car and I cried because I was going, oh my God, what are we going to do? This is horrible. I felt really bad for our patients. So we've been completely shut down since the end of March and we're about to open back up next week. So... I it's so crazy. I remember in the beginning, especially for, you know, for the rest of the country, as a lot of you guys remember, everything kind of took off in Washington uh, first with like all of the COVID stuff. So we're all like watching from the East Coast, like what is happening? And then it seemed like within like a week and a half, it was just everywhere. It was like cases here. I remember having a conversation, someone saying like, oh, there's one case in Virginia. There's finally a case. And now we're at like the thousands of cases. And so that, that's, that's incredible. I, you really feel for some of those patients that you're mentioning in the beginning. They, because, you know, if you've got a serious surgery like cancers and things like that, you're kind of put on the back burner and you're like, uh, 
I'm running out of time. I need to have some of these procedures. And now everyone's just kind of like waiting, like, what do we do? So, yeah. So all of these other, you know, disease processes, they didn't pause for COVID. And that's the hard part. All these other patients out there, you know, they're very symptomatic. And that's why I was feeling horrible because I'm going, man, you know, they have a high family history of cancer and all that stuff and you can't bring them in. So to me, it's been kind of painful watching all of this. And luckily for the patients who were already in the middle of their cancer treatments, they're still coming in, but all these other people, they're put on the back burner. So initially it was, uh, you know, slow everything down, keep your six feet distance. And then it was, okay, if it's not an immediate life-saving procedure or surgery, you can't do it at all. And then it was, okay, well, and this is all from the CDC, um, if it will, you know, if the patient will be worse off throughout time, if this procedure or surgery is delayed, and I mean, that can be a million different things. So we're officially opening back up Monday. I'm thrilled. I can't yeah, nice. Yes. I am. I'm really ready to go back. Um, so I'm, I'll be really happy to get back to my patients. I, uh, I can sense some of your uh, excitement uh, going back. I think that has a lot to do with your next question here. You, you're now, you're a parent, you've got several kids. Now that COVID's here, you're kind of like a teacher. You're the principal, you're the disciplinarian, you are also the chef. Uh, give us briefly, what is that like now for you? Since none it's, of us here are parents. It's fan. It's so great. It's, so great. <laughs> it's, it's really fun. So, um, <laughs> My husband on March 12th, you know, we had that announcement from our governor, Jay Inslee, and the next day, he is a federal law enforcement officer and, you know, his special agent in charge basically came to everybody and said, take your computer, go home, start working from home. So he has been working from home since March 13th. I had an extra week. So my kids were very quickly out of school right after that. So he set himself up as the primary email holder for all of the kids' classes, which is fantastic. That's it's fantastic. awesome. It's so good because my kids are on Zoom, Zern, Seesaw, Canvas, and all these other applications and websites. Are those medications? <laughs> what are those things? Is it's that like, is that like Adderall? What is it? He's <laughs> on Zern. It's all these different forums that they have to go into and do you know, they've got a Zoom meeting today at 11, and then they've got Zern lessons, and they have to get on Seesaw for math and reading and Canvas for I don't even know what. But okay. luckily, because my husband was out of <laughs> I'm just thrilled that my husband has been dealing with all of this because I was still working for a week after that when the kids were out of school. So if they have login problems or they don't know their password or something, I'm like, oh, I don't know. Go see dad. You know, what was your life? And I'll let Jared run wild with that. What was your life and day pre and post COVID? Um, well, we were entering in the spring market anyways. Right. And it, 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 you know, last year was crazy. The year before that was crazy. You hit January and it's, it's pretty much everyone ready to, uh, I like it. Um, everyone's ready to sprint and that was no different this year at all. Um, it was still extremely <laughs> core method. I have nothing. Uh, no um, Jared is so not prepared for this. I'm not drinking yet. I'm doing, doing everything wrong. <laughs> Sorry. Go ahead, Mark. <laughs> um, so, you know, that, that wasn't different. We were still prepared to have that volume. Everyone, this is when you really hustle. This is when you're really out there. You're putting in the hours, 12, 14 hours a day, because this is when it really happens. And um, that was no different. Uh, filled up the pipeline with a bunch of deals. And in my world, the difference was this year that we saw the lowest interest rates we've ever seen. I mean, so every client that I've ever helped before gave me a call and said, hey, you know, my good candidate for refinancing. And I would say almost all of them were because the last several years, if you did something in the fours um, and you can get something in the threes, I mean, that's a tremendous amount of savings. So combine spring market with incredible refinance market with COVID. And what happened with COVID was just every deal took a little bit more work. Um, you got to make sure that the employer is willing to document and show you that their hours and that their job has not been affected. 
And on the radio this morning, I mean, it's pretty much 50% of people in the United States have said that they are. So what is the impact of your change to your job? I mean, are you making just a little bit less due to an hourly situation? Um, you know, are you working from home and able to generate the same amount of income you did before? Those will affect loan decisions. So we had to be really careful about that. Um, some appraisers for a while were not willing to go out to properties. Uh, they didn't want to go into a house that was occupied and the people that were living there didn't want the appraiser to come in. So it was getting hard for a little while to um, get the appraisals done. Now, everybody has adapted. So the cool thing that we saw was people getting out in front of it. Fannie Mae and Freddie Mac said that if you had a Fannie Mae or Freddie Mac loan and you were doing another loan, what we would allow you to do on a refinance is do a drive-by appraisal, which meant that they didn't have to go inside. So that happened, um, which was cool. Um, Jared mentioned closings. Closings were interesting because that's when everybody shows up and shakes hands and says congratulations. And all of a sudden we couldn't really do that anymore. I mean, some people were sitting in their cars and they were bringing them the documents and lit and like, you know, basically watching them sign so that they could notarize, which, I mean, imagine the logistics of that kind of situation. These real estate offices are often closed, which is where they print and prepare the documents. A lot, a lot of challenges. So the business was moving forward and all of the volume was there, but every deal took a little bit extra effort because there was more that went into it. Um, I think we've adapted well at this point. Um, we've had to do a little bit more work on our end to make sure that we're not putting someone into a bad situation, but um, people also all just started started getting uh, $1,200 uh, checks from the government in their bank accounts, which helps as well um, when you're going to close on the deal and all of a sudden they've got some extra money at the closing table. Um, so there's, there's a lot of benefit there, really, really low interest rates. Um, so, I'm working as much as I've ever worked, 12 to 14 hours in some cases, just to stay on top of it. But um, I like the fact that the company, we were one of the first companies to send our employees home. Uh, they don't really want us going to closings. Um, if that can be avoided, we'd love to. I'd love to bring a gift, but you know, if that's another point of contact, we can avoid, um, you know, I'll send you something in the mail or give you a call or maybe do a, a maybe a zoom video or a FaceTime or something just to say congratulations. But um, isn't that, does that feel weird now, Mark? I mean, yeah, you know, the not having closing. I mean, we've, I did three this past month and a half and like, not like, you know, you're not shaking anyone's hands. You're not going yeah. to close. I'm just like, I'm getting the gifts together and I'm just like putting them in their house and just be like, Hey, I left you something inside. I were like, I, Jared's had the same deal, like meeting new clients. Like I met a new yeah. client last week at a house that they wanted to see. And it was like, no handshake or just like, Hey, it is weird. Yeah, how it is weird. That's are my favorite you? Part of the job, but probably you yeah. guys can attest to this as well is getting to know these people through the transaction and building a relationship is what you want to do. And there's barriers to it now. And the closing is the best part. You shake their hand. And you say, not, Congratulations. That's the fun part. That's the fun part. Um, so hopefully like a lot of things, you know, that, that will not be lost in the future when we can kind of, reconnect jared does events i do events hopefully one day we can all get back together and celebrate uh once this oh. is all over but um the business i see jared still, shaking his head uh, he's thinking about that client appreciation party that we were planning appreciation party is probably going to cost about three times more than <laughs> it ever has because of all the margaritas people are going to drink when they can <laughs> finally come out and drink on somebody else's dime again and then yeah. that party is going to be, be outrageous something to look forward to <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, we were we we were planning. You know, we had like invitations getting ready. I had already like, all, all my people. I spent like two hundred bucks on invitations. The deposit was down on the venue. I mean, the menu was chosen. Everything was ready. I was getting hyped. I was telling my clients, and they were all like, "We're." Then they were like, "Are you still gonna do it?" I'm like, "No way, I can't yeah. do it." It was a perfect day too. I looked at it on my calendar. It was. Past, Remember, it was I texted like, you on that. And like seventy. Yeah, I was like, man, this is what we should be doing day. right now. Oh, it's so it's so bad. So, yeah, things so, have changed. Go ahead, Gabe. Mark, tell us. And I, I like talking to Mark, ladies and gentlemen, about like things like this because Mark's so level-headed and he's a calm and he's a very informative. Because I've talked to other people about it and they just got like so emotional. I'm going to use the F word, forbearance. <laughs> oh yeah good question talk to us about that because i've had a lot of like people just Man. like freaking out and i understand the concept but just try to explain to our listeners like who should and should not utilize this 
Well, here's the bottom line. If you can pay it, pay it. I mean, here's the thing is that it's the, it, the fine print on this is, is going to be what's really going to catch a lot of people off guard. Um, you know, there's been assistance offered. And um, the thing is, this might get you through a tough spot. And if you're genuinely unable to pay, um, that's what it's designed to, to help you with. But if you are able to pay, um, the, the likelihood of that coming back around if you don't is, is almost a certainty at some point, whether they tack it on to the mortgage at the end of the process um, or whether a lump sum payment is due once you resume making payments or once the forbearance period is over. Um, it could put you in a bad situation. Um, the lenders are going to still attempt to collect their money if they can. And, you know, the, the bottom line is if you can continue to pay, I, I would say the same thing about student loans. Um, student loans have also been uh, very understanding of the situation, especially the federal backed ones. Um, I think they're automatically offering deferment. Um, don't quote me on any of this because every lender is different. But, um, you know, if you do not pay, um, chances are that that is not going to just go away. It's going to resurface at some point. And there are credit, there are potential credit implications. They're not supposed to affect your credit if you don't make payments. But um, I will tell you that if you're applying for a loan with us or with any other mortgage company, and we find out that you reached, you reached out to, let's say, your student loan provider and said that you were in financial hardship and are unable to pay, that, that could potentially affect our loan decision. So, um, you know, we understand the situation, but you can't have it both ways. You can't go reach out to a lender and say, we've had, you know, business people reach out for grants and things and, and forbearance on, on their expenses uh, and then turn around and try to take out a mortgage. And that's a contradiction there because if you're in a bad spot with your business and unable to pay your employees, but you want to take out a mortgage at the same time, um, you know, you got to think about that logically. And, and from our perspective, that just doesn't make sense. So be careful with these things. Um, my advice is with any financial transaction, make sure that you do your research on it before you take any action. Um, understand the implications of what you're doing. That information is usually out there online. So just be careful with those things. If you can't do it, it's understandable. That's what it's there for. But know what the terms and long-term effects are of that if you, if you, if you don't know. Oh man, thank you. Well, that about wraps our time. I would just say, with everything, we appreciate you guys being on. As you can tell, things are still moving forward. We get Sean. She gets to go back to work soon, so we know she's excited. We see mortgages are still happening. Homes are still selling. If you're afraid to sell a house, don't be. We're taking the proper precautions, so we're going to make sure that you're safe if you need to sell. And if you need to buy, if your lease is ending, if you need to upsize because you can't stand your kids in your tiny house right this second, or you need to downsize because you, whatever reason, maybe your people are moving out. Galen, I don't know why he's pointing at himself. You don't need to get downsized, Galen. Let's no, I'm saying come, come talk to me. That's it. Go talk to Galen so that he can help you upsize or downsize or whatever the transition may be. Uh, things are still happening. So don't let this scare you. We know that it is a scary time, but when we look at everything that's happening, uh, it's overall, there's a lot of positives despite all the... One damage. of the really good bright spots of the economy. Let's keep it going. Yeah. Nice. Thank so, you. That's a good point. Mortgage help. If you've been wondering about refinancing still, it's still an amazing time to refinance. Yeah. Reach out to Mark, Southern Trust Mortgage. Mark, give them your digits. 804-873-1075 uh, or just uh, Google search um, Mark Horton Southern Trust. You'll find me. That's it. If you're looking to buy a house, sell a house, reach out to Galen or I. You have all of our contact information. You can reach me at 804-536-6100. And I am Galen Parker at 804-274-9016. One six. Awesome. And lastly, if you are a real estate agent and you are looking to possibly make a move, if you're looking for a team to join, or if you're just wondering what opportunities we may be able to offer you, feel free to reach out to us directly as well. We'd love to set up a time to sit down and chat. So once again, this has been RVA Real Estate Podcast directly from Zoom for the first time. We appreciate you getting through maybe some of the hiccups we've had, maybe 
audio loss, internet loss, but uh, we'll still put this on our YouTube. It'll be on our social media pages. So uh, listen to it. Let us know what you think. And whatever other subjects you want to hear about in the coming months, uh, please comment up and let us know. If you have a real estate question you would like to ask Jared or Galen, reach out to them at jared at centralvarealty.com or galen at centralvarealty.com. Who knows? It may even be featured on an upcoming episode.